Welcome to CFQ Review, the video review of horror, fantasy, and science fiction cinema, brought to you by Cinefantastique, the online magazine with a sense of wonder. Today's inaugural episode, Boldy goes on a Star Trek Into Darkness. This is the twelfth feature film based on the franchise created by Gene Roddenberry, and the second directed by J.J. Abrams, whose 2009 version of Star Trek rebooted the original crew of the Starship Enterprise for a whole new generation. The film opened nationwide on Thursday, May 16th, including engagements in 3D and IMAX so that eager viewers can enjoy phaser beams, photon torpedoes, exploding starships, and Abrams' omnipresent lens flare like never before. By the way, before getting into the meat of the review, let me say that the post-production 3D conversion is one of the best I've ever seen, and on the enormous IMAX screen, it gives the impression of looking through a giant window, rather like the crew of the Enterprise gazing out of an observation bay. But be that as it may, Star Trek Into Darkness has more to offer than visual flash. The bombs and the bombast are really a backdrop for a well-conceived drama that milks grandiose moments of pathos from the familiar characters. And if that sounds a bit heavy-handed, let's not forget that the film is incredibly funny and a lot of fun. This time, the threat takes the form of Jonathan Harrison, played by Benedict Cumberbatch, who bombs a Starfleet data archive and later targets Starfleet headquarters itself, before skipping off to a planet in the Klingon system. Captain Kirk, again played by Chris Pine, is tasked with using a newly developed photon torpedo to take out Harrison from a safe distance and make a quick getaway before starting an interplanetary war with the Klingons. The action, and there is a lot of it, is sometimes overdone, and the plot is perhaps more convoluted than it needs to be. Fortunately, whenever the film careens in the wrong direction, it quickly makes a course correction. There are some surprises along the way, and the story deliberately mirrors events from a previous classic Star Trek film, offering a fascinating, alternate universe version of previously familiar events. This achievement, though perhaps not unique, is truly remarkable. Not only is the new film enhanced, So also is its classic predecessor, which now becomes the first half of a diptych, each film mutually reinforcing the other. The new cast now own the old roles, as if they were the original actors. Pine is excellent as a youthful incarnation of Kirk, and Zachary Kinto fully captures the dual nature of the half-Vulcan, half-human science officer, Mr. Spock. Benedict Cumberson makes an impressive, threatening villain, augmented by Peter Weller as a Starfleet admiral with a private agenda to confront the approaching Klingon menace now rather than later. And of course, I have to mention that Carl Urban is truly uncanny in his ability to channel Bones McCoy. As in the best of Star Trek, the scenario is a thinly veiled reflection of our current political situation. Think of drones and targeted assassinations, and you get the picture. By staying true to this prime directive, screenwriters Roberto Orchi, Alex Kurtzman, and Damon Lindelof can twist the details in new and interesting ways without ever violating the core values of Star Trek. Yes, Roddenberry's utopian future is threatened in a way to justify a more militaristic pose adopted by Starfleet, but ultimately, Star Trek Into Darkness questions the morality of the approach and reminds us of the dangers of the blowback that can occur when unleashing the dogs of war. Ultimately, Star Trek Into Darkness does what no Trek film has ever done before. It achieves greatness for the second time in a row. Though purists may disagree, Abrams' two Star Trek features rank atop their predecessors, eclipsing all but the best of the classic Trek films. On the CFQ review scale, Star Trek Into Darkness earns four out of five stars, making it a must-see not only for Trekkies, but also for any fan of good science fiction cinema. (sighs) I told you we fit. I am not sure that qualifies.